Welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we're going to be drawing some silly sea life. Before we begin, you're going to need to gather five items for our art project. Simple things, you probably already have them in your house. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser. You could also use the one on the end of your pencil. Something for outlining. My favorite is a Sharpie marker, but if you don't have that, a black colored pencil will also work. You're going to need something for coloring. I'm going to be using crayons. And the last item you're going to need is a piece of paper. Now, I use the paper that comes out of my printer. However, you could also use some white construction paper if you have that. Now, if you are going to be using paper that comes out of your printer, I'm going to ask you to gather a couple extra sheets because you can see that the ink leaks through the paper, and I don't want it to get on your desk. So get a couple extra sheets, and that way, if it does leak through, it's just going to go on to the paper behind. All right, pause the video, gather those items up, and then meet me back here. Welcome to Mrs. Torres's art room. Today, we're going to be doing a silly sea life picture. Now, before we begin, I'm going to have you gather up your five items that I mentioned earlier in the video. So make sure that you have these things before we start. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a piece of paper. Now, I use the paper that comes out of the printer, but as you can see, it leaks through to the back when we're working with our marker. So you might want to grab a few extra pieces of paper just to lay underneath. The next thing you're going to need to look for is a pencil, an eraser, a marker or black colored pencil. I, of course, use the Sharpie marker. And then the last item you're going to need is some crayons. I'm going to be using my crayons inside of a coffee mug. This is a little easier to grab, but you don't have to do that. All right, let's get ready to begin. Move all your items off and out of the way. Make sure your papers are all stacked up in front of you. And the first thing we're gonna do is get ready to figure out how we're gonna design our little critters. Now, the first one I'm gonna work with is my beautiful shark. And I'm gonna be doing this crazy guy over here on the right side of the paper. Now, every time you're drawing something, you wanna look at it and see the shape before you begin. So the first thing I notice is he kind of looks like the back shape of a backward C or like the shape of a banana. He's gonna be larger at the top and more narrow at the bottom. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So finding my center of my paper, I'm gonna put a little tiny dot with my pencil. I always put a dot in the center. It just kind of helps me to place everything around it. And then the next thing we're gonna do is hold our pencil really lightly, and we're gonna be drawing a backward C over on this side of the paper. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna very softly just start brushing my pencil and forming a backward C. Now you are gonna be drawing nice and light because the lighter you draw, the easier it is to erase. I'll be drawing a little bit darker just so that you can see my lines on the video. Now once we've drawn this little backwards C, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna round the front right here to start to form his nose. So I'm gonna come out and around like this. And you want to make sure that this curve is about three fingers wide. So he's nice and wide here. And then we're going to curve it back until it forms a point at the bottom. Now don't worry about your shape looking a little different than mine. This is just for fun. I a lot of times will end up erasing something as I'm working. So keep your eraser near you. For instance, I might want to make that end a little smaller so I have room to draw his tail, but I could also put his tail coming off the edge of the paper. So as I'm working, I might change it a little bit. I think I'm gonna make it just a little smaller so I have a little bit more room to draw his tail. So once I have this shape here, I'm gonna go in and start to form his tail. So I'm just gonna come right on the right side of this point of his tail and come out. And then on the left side of his tail, I'm going to come out the other side and go the other direction. And then I'm just going to form two points, kind of looks like a crab claw that goes up and back like this. As you're working, if you need to erase at any time, make sure that you're erasing very gently so you don't wrinkle your paper. If I'm going too fast, you know, you can always pause the video and then start back up again when you're ready. 
All right, so now once we have that shape, we're gonna go up here to the front and start to design our shark's eye. So we're gonna save some room for his nose up at the front. And right up here at the top, I'm gonna to draw a large oval. Now don't worry about your oval looking smaller than mine or larger than mine, just as long as you've got a big space in there to draw an eyeball later. And then we're gonna make our eye angry. So we're gonna make a diagonal line right here to form his eyelid. Once I put that diagonal line in there, I'm just gonna kind of redraw the front of his eye. And right in this space under here, this is where I'm gonna draw his pupil. So I'm gonna draw a large oval coming out from underneath the eyelid. You can see his eye is already looking a little angry. And then I'm gonna color very lightly just the underside. That'll remind me that I wanna put a shiny light up at the top later. Okay, now we're gonna come out here to the front and we're gonna create his nose. So I'm gonna come right here, right in front of his eyelid and bring a line coming out here. And then I'm gonna put a little curve that comes around, that follows the shape here, around, and just extend his nose a little farther. So he's got a little bump right there. I'm gonna add a little nostril. And now I'm gonna to start to work on opening up his big mouth so we can have some room for his teeth. So right here, underneath where his nostril is, I'm just gonna to start to curve the line up, almost like he's getting ready to smile. See, I'm curving it right there. Let me erase this line here so you're not confused. There you go. And when I make his mouth, I'm gonna curve it up like he's smiling. And then I'm gonna loop it around nice and wide. You wanna make sure this is big and wide here. And then loop it back and tuck it under. So he looks kind of funny right now because he doesn't have any teeth yet, but we'll add his teeth in just a minute. So I went up, I looped it around and brought it back. And then right here is where we're gonna add his first tooth. So I want you to make a big, now make these teeth pretty wide because we have to go over this with a marker later and things always get kind of squished together. So you wanna always wanna draw a little larger than you think you need to. And then I'm gonna add a few more big teeth. Now go ahead and, as I mentioned earlier, make these teeth pretty large. And then in between those spaces, we can draw the bottom teeth. And then once again, in this little space here, I'm gonna very lightly take my pencil to remind me that's the part I'm gonna color in later. Now right here in the front, we're gonna give him a little bottom lip. So I'm just gonna curve a small bump right underneath his top lip here and then extend this line right down to his chin. And then, right now he, he kind of looks like an eel. We're gonna turn him into a shark now. So we're gonna give him that big dorsal fin on his back right here. So behind his eye, I'm gonna come. And now to make his fin, you wanna curve it back like this, and then back down. Now making sure it's got a point here and it's wide here. You don't want it skinny. So wide here and it's curving back and then forward. Now anyone who sees this is gonna know that this is a shark just by that fin and those angry eyes. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a separator line so that when we color him later, part of him will be gray or blue, and the other part will be white. So we're just gonna be going right underneath his nostril here and adding one more line that comes down to the bottom. So right here, just kind of follow around, go up underneath his eye, loop it around. We're just kind of following the curve of his body. And back to the bottom. And somewhere around this area, we're gonna draw his little arm fin. So I'm just gonna draw kind of like a teardrop shape. I'm gonna make an, an upside down U shape here. 
and then bring it down to a point like that. Looks kind of like a football shape. Then I'm going to erase this line right here inside of his fin, because we're gonna do that all the same color as the back of his body. Now the next part is going to be his fin on the other side. Now we won't be able to see the entire fin because it would be on the other side of his body. So only a portion of the fin is going to stick out. So I'm just gonna go like this and draw half of his fin. Kind of looks like a leaf shape there. So we are done already with the shark part. Now over here, we have two more animals to create. One is going to be a puffer fish, and another one's going to be an octopus. So I'm gonna be putting the puffer fish in the upper left-hand corner, and then I'm gonna do the octopus in this nice curve right here. Starting with the puffer fish, I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna be drawing a small, well not small, but like a medium-sized circle here. Please don't worry if the circle is perfectly round or not, because we're going to be changing it later anyway. And then on the back of that circle, I'm going to add the puffer fish's tail. So I'm just going to draw one line coming up, one line coming back, and just make a real gentle wobbly line for the tail. For the arm fin, I'm going to make a small curve like this, and I'm going to draw one line up, one line back. Same thing we did before. And then the other fin is going to be on this side of his body, so I'm going to go one line up, one line back. And now we're going to get ready to draw his eyes. We'll add his little spines later. There's one type of puffer fish called a porcupine spine puffer fish. So we're going to make his eyes really large because he is a little afraid of that mean shark. So you really want to exaggerate his eyes. So I'm going to make two big circles. Now your circles don't have to be touching like mine are. You can make them farther apart. And then to make his eyes look surprised, we're going to float his eyeball right in the middle of those circles or ovals. And then very lightly with my pencil color, the bottom part of that pupil to remind me later to do that with my colored pencil or my marker. And then we want to make him look like he's puffing his mouth up. So the way that this puffer fish works and defends himself is he looks kind of like a skinny fish when he's swimming, but when he starts to feel afraid, he gulps in big gulps of air, I'm sorry, of water, and when he fills his whole lungs up with water, his whole body will puff up. So then when he does that, his mouth has to look like he's holding his breath. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a very short little mouth here. I'm gonna swell up his cheek by drawing one curved line this way and one curved line that way. And then we wanna kind of bulge his cheek out on this side and then bulge his cheek out on this side. Now around the circle, what we're going to do is we're gonna add just a few spikes. We're gonna go over these with our marker later. So you wanna make a little space in between each one. And I'm just following the pattern of that circle that I drew in pencil. And then for his eyes, I'm gonna make his eyebrows kind of tilting up. Now the next item of um, animal we're gonna draw is our octopus. We're gonna draw him down here in this big space here. So for our octopus, let me show you a black and white version. We're gonna be drawing the head of the octopus. So what shape will we be drawing? Circle. And then we're gonna be drawing some of his legs. Now, when I first drew this, I just felt like I did too many legs. It was a little too confusing. And yes, I know octopuses have eight legs, but it got a little confusing. So when I did my next picture, I only gave him six legs, but I don't think anyone noticed that 
he was missing two legs. And it's a little easier to draw if you don't draw so many legs. So to draw the octopus, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up under here, in this nice big space here, and we're gonna start by drawing a large circle for his head, saving room down here for his body. Now, don't worry about your circle being perfectly round. It does not matter at all. You could draw an oval if you want to. Next, we're gonna add two large, large eyes. I make mine kind of an oval, fat oval shape. I'm gonna have him looking up at the shark, but you could also have him looking over here at the puffer fish, or you could have him have silly eyes. Maybe he's got one eye looking down and one eye looking up like this. I want you to decide what you want to do. For mine picture, I'm gonna have him looking kind of up toward the shark. I'm gonna color the lower portion very lightly with my pencil. I'll go over it later with my marker. I'm gonna give him a little bit of worried eyebrows. So I'm just bringing them up on an angle like this. I call it a TV eyebrow. For his mouth, I'm just gonna make a gentle curve like I'm making the letter C. And I'm gonna loop it around at the bottom like that. Color that space in very lightly. Give him a little lower lip. And now that I've drawn his head, I'm gonna trace over the line that I wanna keep. And I'm gonna to start to create his legs. So underneath his head here, I'm gonna skip a little space right here and make a little dot where I wanna start his leg. And I'm gonna draw the first leg drawing a backwards C this direction. Now you want to make sure his legs are fat up here toward his head and then they narrow down more skinny, kind of like a worm at the, at the end. So I'm going to go fat so it's nice and wide here and then I'm going to follow the curve around and then right when I get toward the end I'm just going to loop it around like a worm. Okay, that's leg number one. Now we're gonna add the little suction cups later, but first let's just draw the legs, how you want the legs to go. Now the next leg, we could curve it this way, we could curve it out this direction. So I'm gonna be making mine a little gentle curve going this way. Remember, we wanna make the legs wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna curve my lines so they get more and more narrow as they come down. Loop it around at the end. And then I'm gonna add a leg behind each one of these legs. So this leg is just going to be right behind here and it's gonna curve around and down. And you can do it however you wanna draw this leg always making sure you have a wide space up here and it tapers down and becomes narrow. Now you see this leg is in front, so I'm gonna pretend I'm drawing through here and I'm gonna come out the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna bring this leg down and maybe this one will come behind his leg here. It's going to be wide up here at the top. And go through this leg and back out the other side. So that's one, two, three, four. I have room to add probably two more. I don't want to draw all of the legs, so I'm going to draw another leg that comes out here. And then this one, since this leg's in front, I'm just going to continue it here. This one reminds me of an elephant's trunk. And I have a little space back here, so I'm just gonna add one more leg that's kind of tucked behind here. Let's see where that leg would go. It would probably be back here. You might not be able to see the whole leg. All right, I don't need that little dot in the center anymore. That dot helped me in positioning all my artwork so that I have kind of everything scattered around the center. Now the last thing we're going to draw before we go onto our marker is a little bit of sand at the bottom. So I like to come over here 
on this side of the paper and just draw a wavy line, very gentle wavy line that comes down. I'm gonna put it behind his fin because as you can see, his tail fin goes a little lower. And I'm gonna bring it down to the middle of the paper here. And then I'm gonna copy doing the same thing from this side. So you could start up as high as you want. And I'm just gonna follow the same curve. So I'm gonna pretend I'm drawing through my octopus and then I'm gonna continue this line down to the center again. So this line ends up being behind that one. It doesn't really matter how you do it. You could even just do a straight line at the bottom or a wavy line at the bottom. But I like to bring it up on the sides here because then I have a little room to add a little bit of seaweed. Let me show you in my finished picture. So now to add a little bit more color to my picture, I just drew a couple clumps of seaweed. So to do that, I just went like this. I made a little mound. And then I started with my first wavy line that I brought up, brought it around and brought it back to the sand. And I'm gonna do that two more times. Up, loop it around, bring it back. Up, loop it around and bring it back. You could add as many of these little pieces of seaweed that you wanna add. I'm gonna also do one up here, just kind of coming off the edge of the paper, just to add a little bit more color into my picture later when we use our crayons. If you have lots of room left, you could design some different fish and put some fish up in the areas. I'm gonna keep mine a little bit more simple because I worked kind of large on my picture. Might have a little bit of room to add a little clump of seaweed over here. You could make different varieties of seaweed too. You could actually look online and see some different types of seaweed and create that, that if you'd like. All right, I'm, draw, I'm done with my pencil lines, so I'm gonna put my pencil away. I'm gonna grab my eraser before I start inking, because the first thing I wanna do is go in and erase the lines I don't wanna keep, the ones that for sure I don't wanna keep. For instance, I don't want these lines inside of his eye. So notice when I erase, I put my hand down on the table and then I put my eraser in this space here. Even if you're using the end of your pencil, I do this as well. I call this the duck's mouth. And so when your hand is down like this and if this was a duck quacking, if your eraser is inside that area, your paper is not going to wrinkle. So if I erase out here, you'll notice that my paper would wrinkle, it would move. So as I'm erasing here, I'm just kind of pulling out all those lines that I don't want to keep. I'm trying to keep my eraser inside the duck's mouth. And I just brush away the crumbs as I finish. When you're all done erasing all those big lines that you don't want to keep, here's a little bit right here at the bottom of the octopus. Then we'll get ready to use our marker. All right, moving on to the marker. So I'm going to put my eraser over to the side. I am using a Sharpie marker. Now you can also use a black Crayola watercolor marker, but those tend to smear a little bit when your hand rubs against them. So that's why I like to work with a permanent marker. Remember, you want to have extra paper underneath because it is going to leak through. Four, just grabs uh, maybe some old magazines and put them underneath before you start to work. And all you're gonna do now is start tracing over the lines you wanna keep. Now the faster that you draw with your marker, the cleaner your lines are going to be. You can start anywhere on your drawing. You don't have to be tracing where I'm tracing. But the faster that your pen moves around that paper, the cleaner your lines are going to look. They're not gonna be so wobbly. If you can hear your marker screaming, then you know you are drawing too hard. Now I talk about this in my art class a lot with my students that your marker will make a sound. You'll hear it screeching on the paper and that means you're pushing too hard with the marker and that breaks the tip of the marker down right here and then it won't hold a nice point anymore. So you really wanna kind of practice not pushing down really hard as you're inking and working quick with your pen. 
Now, when you get up here to the eyeball, I want you to make sure that you really are careful when you're coloring in the eye. You can color the whole thing in black right there for the pupil, or you can leave a little shiny light the way I did right there. Don't forget that when you are tracing over his teeth, move your pen quick. You're just kind of making the letter V. Then you're gonna make some upside down Vs. We can use our marker and fill in that space, black in between the two sets of teeth, or you can wait and do it with a crayon. I did it with a black crayon. Let me show you how nice it looks. I did it with a crayon later. Once you're done tracing everything on your shark, you can move on and trace one of your other animals. And when you are completed tracing everything, then we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm going to pause my video right now and I'm going to finish inking mine and then I'll meet you back here when you're ready to move on to coloring. Okay, I have finished outlining all of my three animals and now I'm going to go in and I told you that I would show you how to do some suction cups on your octopus later. So I like to do this after I've drawn the legs because it does get a little bit confusing figuring out which leg has which suction cups. So the first thing you're going to do is just choose one of the legs that is a little bit more simple. That's not too wavy. So that's this leg for me. This one's pretty simple here. And I'm going to add an extra line right alongside of it like this. So now that's gonna be the underside of the leg. And then I'm gonna draw an oval shape. Kind of like long jelly beans in that space. And then once I've drawn those little jelly beans kind of hiding in there, I'm gonna add one little extra line for the suction cup. Now, if you have any other spaces that you could add that to, then you're gonna do the same thing again. So for instance, right here, I could even go in and separate this leg just a tiny bit right here and add a suction cup there. Now on the end of a leg, like see this one right here that's curving down? This is a great place for just drawing the bottom of the suction cup. So if you can kind of think about the tread on the bottom of your shoe, that's going to look like suction cups later too. This would be another really great spot to do that too. I'm just adding these little tiny parts. Maybe a few over here too. All right, now the next thing is to go in and erase your pencil lines before we start to color. Now before we do that, here's one more place that I think would be kind of fun to add a little detail. So do you see where these little side fins are? We could add a few lines right here. We could do the same thing on the tail. We could add a little motion by making two commas side by side like this. It's gonna look like our fish is moving. Something else that we could add are bubbles. So if I'm gonna draw a bubble, I'll draw one bubble. The next bubble will get a tiny bit smaller, and then the next one will get a little bit smaller. You could also add some little swirly whirlies on your octopus's head. You could add them on his arms as well. Now when you're all done, we're gonna go ahead, close up your marker so it doesn't dry out. And we're gonna go back in and erase all the rest of our pencil lines. If you outlined everything in a black colored pencil, you wanna be a little bit more careful as you're erasing that you don't smear the colored pencil. But with Sharpie marker, I can erase pretty easily without smearing my marker. This is a perfect time for me to talk about the Sharpie marker versus working with like a water-based marker, like a Crayola marker. If you are coloring with a Crayola marker, black marker, and you do all your outlining, what happens when you erase sometimes, especially if your hands are a little wet, maybe from sweating a little bit, um, sometimes the marker will smear. So that's why I really like to work with the Sharpie markers. And yes, they are a permanent marker, um, but they, 
they absorb into the paper so quickly, they just really never smear. So I'm just going in, I'm erasing all my pencil lines before we go in with the crayon coloring. I'm just brushing all those crumbs onto the floor. Please make sure you're getting rid of these crumbs and not leaving them on your paper because when we start to color later, we're gonna to wanna to make sure our paper's nice and clean. Once most of those pencil lines are erased, we're gonna go in and start to color. So let me show you a close-up of my picture, and then you can see the colors that I used. All right, so when I did my drawing, I wanted my puffer fish to kind of match the colors of a real puffer fish. And I was looking them up on the internet and they're kind of a yellow golden color. They have a little bit of red in them. Sometimes they have a little brown in them. So I just used my crayons and I grabbed a yellow. I grabbed a kind of a golden yellow. I used a little orange. And I even added a little bit of red, orange, or red in it. So that's how I colored my Puffer fish. When I was coloring my shark, the colors that I used were black, I used gray. Now if you don't have gray in your crayon box, you can just color lightly with the black. And you'll notice that if you look at my picture, it also has a little blue in it. I love to add blue when I'm working with gray because I think it makes the gray a little prettier color. So those are the colors that I used for my shark. And for my octopus, I really couldn't decide what color I wanted him to be. I was gonna make him kind of a blue-gray color, but that was the same color as my shark. So I started with those colors, and then I decided instead to add purple. So I just went in and added purple. So my octopus is blue and purple, and then I added a little black for my kind of shading around the edges. So let's now begin. Oh, and of course the sand was brown and yellow. I think I did some yellow in there too. And then I used a couple shades of green for my seaweed. So let me show you how I did some of my coloring. Now I had mentioned earlier, I love to keep my crayons in a coffee mug. You can see why. I can just reach in and grab the color I need. And um, my mug is kind of short so I can get them pretty easy. So the first color I'm gonna grab for my shark is gray, and I'm gonna be coloring uh, in one direction as best I can. So I'm gonna start right here on his back, and I'm just gonna very softly with my gray, just go in and give him on this top layer, I'm not gonna do the bottom layer where he's white, just the top layer, I'm just gonna give him a light coat of gray. Oops, I just messed and got some in his eye. And then once I've colored a starting coat of gray on his body, I'm gonna also do it on his arm. And the back arm. His fin, actually. Don't forget his eyelid up here. That would be a part of his face and his dorsal fin. So that's the first color. I'm gonna bring it down to his tail as well. Now you notice I'm not coloring really hard at first, just kind of putting a quick base coat on. I try to color in the same direction as best I can, but when I get into a tight squeeze, then I'll turn my crayon and go a different direction. All right, so now once I've done a base coat there, the next thing I'm gonna do is go in and put a heavier coat of that color around the edge. It's gonna make my picture kind of pop a little bit. So right here, I'm just going in and using that same gray crayon. If you don't have gray, as I mentioned earlier, you could be doing this with a, a light coat of black. Let me do a little heavier coat of gray here, a little heavier coat around the edge of his dorsal fin, a little heavier coat around the side of his face here, his nose, his nostril, 
Oh, is that her arm fin? His tail. It just gives it a little bit more dimension if you outline a little heavier around the edge. All right, already starting to look super awesome. Next color I'm gonna work with is a little bit of blue. So I have a couple of different shades of blue in my crayon box to choose from. It's up to you which color you wanna work with. So I'm gonna now go in and do the same thing again. So a light coat of blue. I don't want him to look like a blueberry. I'm just very lightly going in and giving him a little bit of blue. Want to make sure that wherever you used your gray, you're doing the same thing with your blue. Try to keep your crayon going the same direction. I have to catch myself because sometimes I go in the other direction. A little bit in his nostril, a little shadow in there. His eyelid, don't forget the eyelid. His fins. His dorsal fin. His tail fin. And then, one more time, you can just add a little heavier coat around the edge, just putting a little pop that color so it's a little darker. When I'm finished with that, the next color I'm gonna go in with is black. So if you already used black because you didn't have a gray, this time you're gonna do your black a little heavier. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black on the side and then softly brush it over the whole picture. A little bit on the side, and then brush it softly over his fin. Gonna do the same thing on the dorsal fin. A little bit heavier around the edge. Notice I'm not doing it really, really hard. A little bit of black over all of the shark. And then a little heavier around the edge. Following the same thing on the front of his face, just like we did before. Not very heavy, just nice and light. His eyelid. Spins. And then while you have your black crayon in your hand, go ahead and very carefully color the space in between his top and bottom teeth. All right, when you're finished drawing your shark, you're next going to move on to your puffer fish and you're going to color your puffer fish. So for my puffer fish, I, as I mentioned earlier, I use some yellows and some oranges. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did before with the shark. I'm going to color with one of the lighter colors first. Going over all of the puffer fish except for his white eyes. I'm going to do the color a little darker around the edge. I'm just kind of pushing a little bit harder with my crayon. Not so hard that you break your crayon in half, but just a little harder. Then I'm going to move on to another color. So I've got a little bit of a, I have a golden yellow here. So I'm going to add that color in. If you don't have that, don't worry. Just move on to maybe some orange. Then move on to an orange. You could use hot pink, you could use red, you could use burgundy or maroon, you could do brown, tan, you could put some spots on him. Some puffer fishes have spots. So 
you see when you draw a little bit harder around the edges, it just kind of ties the whole picture together really nice. I'm gonna move in and put a little red there now. So I'm gonna do a little bit of red around the edge, which actually when I brush the red over the orange and the yellow, it makes it look like red orange. I'm going to put a little bit of red over those cheeks too, not very hard. And when I'm all finished with that, I'm just going to go over all of those colors one more time with my yellow, just to kind of mix all those colors together. Then the yellow ends up working like a blending tool. When I'm all done with my puffer fish, I'm gonna move on and do the same thing with my octopus. And then I'm gonna choose a different color for the underside of his tentacles. So I'm gonna show you this picture. You don't need to sit here and watch me color my whole picture because I want you to color your picture. But I'm gonna give you a few pointers before um, we finish up our lesson today. So once you're done coloring uh, your octopus, whatever color you decide to make him, and your seaweed and your sand. The last pick part of your picture is to color the water in the background. So I have a little trick for doing um, that. And what I do is if I ever find any broken crayons, which tends to happen a lot, I will take a broken crayon, meaning one that has um, already broken in half, and I peel the wrapper off. And that's how I colored my background so quickly. Now, if you have a brand new box of crayons that you just bought, please do not peel the wrapper off and break your crayons in half. This is only if you happen to have some old crayons from maybe last year. I peel the wrapper off and I use the side of the crayon for coloring. And the way I do that is you wanna make sure, this is important, that you don't have anything else on your desk. Like for instance, you see that big crack in my desk right here and some leftover paint and things. This would not be a good surface for me to start coloring on because that's gonna leave a mark on my paper when I start to use the side of my crayon. So what I do is I always get a big stack of old paper and I lay it on my desk, something big that's a little bit larger than what I'm drawing. So you can see my paper here, my background paper is wider than this paper. And then after I have a nice big thick surface underneath, then I take the side of my crayon like this and I very carefully start to run it across my paper this direction. So if you see my ocean, I used blue, I used a little bit of green, I used a little bit of black around the edges or gray, and that is how I got this texture in the background. Now, if you don't have any broken crayons, you can do exactly the same thing, just using your regular crayon and just trying to color in one direction very softly. It's very important that you color in one direction. You don't wanna be coloring up and down and then side to side in the background. You want your background nice and soft. All right, well, I hope you had some fun today learning how to draw some silly sea life, and I cannot wait to continue to keep teaching you more and more art lessons. I would love to hear from you. So if you had fun doing this lesson, make sure you send me an email at rtorres at lcusd.net and attach the photo. I would love to see what you have been coloring. So hope you had fun and I will see you for our very next lesson. Have a great day.